one of the cool things about Excel is that we can always reference a cell's location, but not just by its actual name. For example, cell A1. We can actually give a cell a name. Every cell can have a name, a very specific, unique name, that whenever we reference that name, Excel will know that we're referencing that specific cell. Let me give you an example. So in cell A1, this is A1. But if I went to a new worksheet, this is also A1. Although we are in sheet number three, this is A1. So I'm going to give cell A1 in this worksheet a name, a specific name. And I'm going to call that my name, just as an example. Right. When I select A1, you will notice in the name box, its name comes up, my name. If I go here, you'll see that this is still A1. If I typed in equals my name, do you notice it already sees, okay, there is a cell called my name and it will equal my name, which is there's nothing in there at the moment. So the point is you can give a cell a unique name that you can then reference anywhere at any time. You can also give a range of cells a name as well. So let's say, for example, from C1 all the way to C5, that is a specific range. We're going to give that a name as well. So let's call that my range, for example. Press enter. Now you'll notice that if I click inside any of these cells, I'm seeing the individual location, C1, C2, C3. But if I go ahead and select the range, there is the name of that range. How does this work practically? Have a look at this example. Let's say, for example, you were selling t-shirts through the week, Monday to Friday, and the cost per t-shirt was 25 Rand. 25 Rand per t-shirt. And each day you sold a certain number of shirts. Now you want to work out how much money you've made in terms of sales on the shirts. Normally, we would go equals the number of shirts we sold times the cost per t-shirt. Now, that's fine for Monday, and you can see it. B4, there's B4 times B1, B1. That's fine. But when I drag this down, you will notice that it's not looking quite right. How can I have made no money on Tuesday? That's impossible. That's because... Tuesday, it's now looking at B2. You know, and then I've got to go fix this and go, oh man, I've got to drag that back up again, back to B1. Let's undo, let's get back to where we were. Okay, so this can be made a lot easier by simply giving this cell a name. And let's call that cost per shirt. That is the name of that. Let's just open that up, cost per shirt. Now, watch what happens. I can go equals B4 times, and if I type in cost per shirt, there it is there, cost per shirt. B4 times cost per shirt. I don't have to, now, I don't have to worry about referencing B1 every time. Cost per shirt is fixed. So if I drag this down now, there you go, B5 times cost per shirt, B6, B7, B8, all times that cell, because I gave it a name. Let's give this range a name as well, and let's call this total sales, total sales. Remember, no spaces, okay? Total sales, so this range is now called total sales. Now, instead of me going equals sum, and then selecting the range or selecting individual cells. If I just type in total sales, or as you noticed when I selected that range, total sales came up, there you go. That is referencing that range of cells just by the name, sum total sales. And that is the difference between using cell referencing, as in A1, B1, C1, or giving cells a name, especially a cell or a range of cells.